Hello. Hello. Tell me if you're there, if you can hear me. I'm going to wait for a few minutes because it's not quite well it, it's not quite 4 p.m in the uk um now let me think what the times are so it's nearly 11 a.m est and then nearly 8 a.m pt so if you can hear me it would be lovely if you can put something in the comment section so i know that it's everything is working okay um, if you can't hear me, also let me know. I'm looking at my sound and it looks like everything's working okay. So I'll just wait to hear from somebody who can tell me whether it's working or not. Hi, Lynette. Can you hear me? I'm just waiting for someone to to let me... Yeah, oh, brilliant, that's good, because it's all a bit technical. But as you can see, I've got like a PowerPoint presentation there, so I have to kind of do this streaming stuff, which, you know, for a middle-aged woman, it, it's quite a lot to contend with. <laughs> because it's really technical you have to have another piece of software to to be able to do the streaming if you want to stream up anything other than yourself talking which I kind of quite like to do because it means you can kind of see what I'm talking about it gives me a few prompts so yeah lovely to see you Lynette and um, I'll just wait we're just on the hour now, so as I said, it's four o'clock here in the UK, four o'clock in the afternoon, and it's 8am, I think, in Pacific time, and then Eastern Standard Time, I think it's 11am, so just I'll just wait a few more minutes for people to, because to, I know there's a few people who've said to me that they're going to join but of course something else always overtakes and I know that on Sundays people are really busy, aren't they? And I would say, so how it's going to run today, I'll just tell you how it's going to run. I'm going to do a bit of a sort of presentation, but it's not death by PowerPoint. Just have to say it's mainly pictures and a few words because most of you, like me, you'll be professional people and you know, you don't like those kind of PowerPoint presentations in your work time. So certainly you don't want to see that. You don't want to see that at the weekends, but it just helps if you can see some words as well as me talking, I think. I think that's helpful. Oh, hi, Mosca. Frog, frog lover. Oh, brilliant. We have frogs here. We have toads, quite a lot of toads. I live near a nature reserve. So we have a lot of, and it's very watery. It's actually quite wet at the moment. And so we see a lot of frogs and toads. So, and newts, which I think is something that's native to the UK, newts. So yeah, lovely to have you and, and good morning. So I think I'll sort of crack on because there's a few of you that have joined now and I'm sure people will will join at, you know shortly so how it's going to run today is and and please do if you want to ask questions or make comments and along the way please do by all means do that if there's anything that I'm talking about and you're not sure the only problem for me is I may have to just wait until there's a sort of suitable time during the, the presentation to kind of answer questions. I might not do it straight away, but I will answer every question that I can, if possible. Uh, you know, unless we get a thousand people, 
on the <laughs> on this live stream if there's a thousand people i might not be able to answer all the questions hi kennedy that's my partner that's just joined which in case you're thinking that's really strange he we don't live together so that's why he he's joined and then he can tell me if i'm doing something wrong which is great he can text me if there's any problems so yeah, so I'll run through how to meal prep, which I know a number of you have said to me that you really want to understand that a bit better. I'm going to talk about healthy snacks, which is another comment. These are great things that people have actually asked for me to cover today. So I'm not covering what I wanted to cover. I'm actually covering the questions that people have either asked to to have on this session through Instagram or through YouTube so it's really good because then I know I'm covering something that people actually want to hear about so in terms of meal prep before I do that I'm going to just talk a little bit about myself and in a minute you'll see a couple of pictures that come up about me and who am I? Well, my name's Melissa and I started this YouTube channel over a year ago, back in August 2019, because I felt that there was a massive void, that there wasn't any information for women over 40 or like me over 50 or anyone really in that sort of older age category. So it could be women over 60 as well. And I know I sort of have women over 60 on my programs and we all of us have something in common normally is that we really struggle with our weight when we get to a certain age even if we were skinny all our lives normally at some point in our 40s and 50s we're going to have a struggle with our weight and that's due to hormones and the reason I started this YouTube channel and it's really turned into my passion, my business. So I have a coaching programme. I run programmes for women over 40. And, you know, I retrain to sort of enable myself to do that. Is I did it because I just felt there wasn't enough information out there for women like us. And I'm really passionate about that. I'm starting to see more women. I've just been in communication with a woman this morning who actually does stuff around perimenopause and diet and lifestyle. And I'm starting to see more women spring up now that are offering this. But I know when I first started, it wasn't very common and I really struggle because I have these YouTubers that I absolutely love. You know, you probably know them. I like people like Stephanie but Buttermore. Um, I like Hannah Oberg, people like that. But what I did find, and they're absolutely fantastic, you know, and I'm not putting them down, but they really weren't set up to talk about women over 40. And why would they? Because they don't understand any of our problems. So I wanted to kind of set something up to help women. And it's really a passion. It's become a passion of mine now to help women over 40 on their weight loss journey. Or it might not be so much about losing weight. I talk to women who, you know, they might be that skinny fat where you've just kind of not got the body shape that you used to have in your younger days and you want to kind of reshape your body. So sometimes it's not so much about weight loss, but just going through a body transformation or com recomposition as I did. I went through a body recomposition so that's a bit about me, but do ask me anything else if you want to know about me. And I am going to run through very quickly at the end before I take questions a bit about my programs as well, because I am doing a Black Friday deal, which you might want to take advantage of. So I'm going to run through how to meal prep. So I'm not actually in my kitchen today, but I do have a link in the description 
of one that I did a video I did a few weeks back which is from my kitchen and it's got everything on what I'm talking about in terms of how to prepare but it, it shows you visually how to do that. I'm going to run through a few healthy snack ideas. I'm going to talk about vitamins and supplements and then I'm going to give you a really good opportunity for Q&A because I know lots of you will probably have some burning questions that you would like to talk to me about. So why do we meal prep? I'm just going to talk about why. And there's a really silly picture of me eating food. I absolutely love food. My partner that's on this live will tell you he's listening. He will know. I'm actually, I eat a lot and I really enjoy food. So there's no reason why you can't really enjoy food and get in shape. But the reason I wanted to talk about this meal prep, and I did talk about it on my last live, but I didn't really say how to do it, is that it's so important if we're going on a body transformation or weight loss journey. It saves time in the long run because you're not scrapping around every day trying to find what you're going to eat. It's going to help you stay on track. It's really good to plan ahead and be organised when it comes to weight loss. Why? Because the most successful people, the people that are really good at following through on this weight loss journey and on their plans of eating right, the reason that they do that is generally because they're well organised and they plan ahead and they do their meal prep. You know, it, it's so important in terms of not giving you so many opportunities for error. Because if you turn up somewhere and you haven't got something to eat and you're kind of thinking, well, where can I buy something? It's really difficult eating out. That's the first thing. If you've got to go and get a takeout to actually stay on track with that because we live in a world most of you will be in the USA but it's exactly the same and it's going that way in the UK where it's really really hard to eat on plan if you go you know eating out so if I get caught short which isn't very often I tend to go to a supermarket because that way I know I can get some lean protein and a salad bag or something like that and I'll be all right but trying to eat takeout on you know on a diet is is pretty difficult if not impossible so how do you meal prep well the first thing about meal prep is you need to know you need to plan ahead what you're eating that might might sound really obvious but for me how I work generally you know, when I'm dieting, and it's, it's generally when it becomes quite strict, I know from day to day, I have a meal plan, and I talked about how to set up a meal plan on my last live, and I'll just make a shopping list from that meal plan, so if I know I'm having something like chicken breast for lunch, and it's 100 grams, I'll go out and buy 500 grams cook that all in one go and then I've got meals for every day but I'll, I'll take you through how that's that's done and then what I'll do is set aside two or three hours normally on a Sunday and I've actually started that process today already by cooking up some vegetables and some sweet potatoes ahead I'll start on a Sunday and set aside two or three hours I would say to make it really easy for yourself go for roasting things in the oven because that way you're not really adding fat you can add a bit of spray oil but you're going to make it so much easier for yourself if you do as much as you can obviously you can't do rice if you're cooking up rice ahead you can't do that in the oven there's certain foods that you're going to need to do on your stove top but it, in general even vegetables you can roast in the oven just 
bung them all in the tray and roast them in the oven, it's going to be so much easier. It won't feel like a chore then because you can do other things. And the same with potato, sweet potato or white potato. You can peel it if you want to or leave it with the skin on and just cut it up and put it in the oven. And the same with whatever meat you're eating. So it's just really easy. Or your other protein source might be something like soya dried soya mints or tofu those things don't really need cooking dried soya mints need soaking so you know that's what I've done today I've just soaked my dried soya mints with some spices and I'll put those prepared into a box and what I would say is make up your um, meals three or four days ahead in terms of food hygiene I wouldn't go any further than that because you'll start to find the foods deteriorated a bit after three or four days. But what you can do is actually freeze it. So if Sunday was your only day, for example, and you couldn't do another day in the week in the evening or whenever you're available. You could do your seven days ahead and put the other meals in the freezer. So that's another thing you can do. And then what I would do in terms of cooking and storing, try and separate everything out because you're going to need to weigh it into boxes, into Tupperware boxes. So obviously you need plenty of Tupperware boxes. So cook your vegetables. I tend to go for kind of low carb vegetables like peppers, broccoli, spinach, you know, cabbage, green, all those kind of green vegetables and tomatoes, they're all low carb vegetables and some of them you might want raw so you don't need to cook ahead. So you probably have a baking tray full of your vegetables that you've cooked. Don't worry too much about weighing vegetables out, you're not going to get fat on vegetables so it's not necessary to weigh them out but the, the carbs and the protein, what you would do is cook that up ahead. So when I talked about the chicken, the 500 grams of chicken, cook it up ahead and then weigh each portion into your Tupperware box. And then the same with the rice, weigh each portion into your Tupperware box. And you could actually, you can see in those Tupperware boxes, I've mixed my vegetables in with my rice. Um, but you would, if you're going to be really accurate, actually, you know, keep them separate until you've got them into the boxes. And as I said, three or four days ahead and then store that in the fridge and then you can take them out as and when you need it. Now, the other thing to say is actually, these are lunches, but it's actually a really good idea to prepare your um, evening meal ahead. Um, it's so good because that's another area that you can sort of really fall down on is if you haven't got your evening meal prepared and particularly if you go out to work, and, well, you know, even if you're working at home because you can be stuck on Zoom meetings, can't you? And you don't have time to think about your evening meal. And then suddenly, bang, it's six o'clock, you're starving. And that's when it can be really difficult, again, to eat the right food. So I would say always prepare your evening meal ahead. And I have linked, I made a video a couple of weeks ago or maybe it's actually a couple of months ago now, where I did the whole prep. So I did a prep on the lunch, a prep on the evening meal, which was salmon and vegetable parcels, but I actually wrapped them up in parcels in tin foil and then I didn't cook them. So they had all the marinade on them, all the vegetables, the salmon, all together in a parcel. It could be any fish, but I tend to eat sort of oily fish in the evening and then um, you just bung it in the oven so you've got it there and that's really great because if you don't have you know it literally takes 10 minutes 
and that's where and I know because I've done it myself I can fall down with my evening meal if I haven't planned it ahead and got it all ready before I actually need it and then you're starving hungry and then you just think oh I'll just eat whatever I can find that's what happens so if you can plan ahead you're much more likely to be successful and be able to stick to your plan and it's really easy and just try and make it as sort of appetizing i know when i was going out to work people used to look at my lunch boxes and think they looked absolutely amazing and they were astonished that i was actually on a diet because they said oh it looks really nice so and also it the other benefit that i didn't talk about is actually it saves you a lot of money because you're not buying food out which is really expensive i know when i was working in an office you you go out for lunch and it's just really expensive so i'm just going to pause there and look at the questions because i i haven't done that for a bit um oh why do pre checking in for from Atlanta, hi. Hi, Melissa, just bought glass containers for meal prep. Oh, glass containers sound amazing. Much better for the environment than plastic and also probably healthier. So that must be, you know, the only thing, I think that's okay if you're at home, but maybe they're not so, they're a bit heavy and they could smash, couldn't they? So that could be one that might be a bit more difficult if you go out to work. Exactly, definitely a reason I am a new subscriber. I will be 47 on Tuesday. Oh, that was talking about the fact that I thought there was a bit of a void for women over 40. I was so excited to thank you. Well, thank you, Mosca. That's absolutely brilliant. I love that. And this is why I like coming on the lives because I actually like to read all your comments and just know that you're there and I'm actually talking to someone. Because when I started this channel, I didn't have very many people looking at my stuff. I can tell you, it's a bit of a funny beast, um, YouTube. It takes a while to pick up momentum. And you can get a bit despondent because you think, well, nobody really cares. No one's listening. But I do know now, especially when I do the lives and the feedback that I get, that, you know, it's obviously really of interest, this topic. So... And it's just a passion of mine. It's really my life's mission. My life's mission is to get every woman over 40 strength training. And I know I'm not here to talk about that, but that is my goal. It's, you know, and I know some people say they can't do it, but I think everyone can to a certain extent because it doesn't always mean lifting heavy weights we can do it with body weight or resistance bands so that's my mission that's my goal really and and why why I set up this channel and yes I talk about diet you know I talk about menopause I talk about sleep talk about stress all those things that are really important and become more of an issue as we get older and why we're retaining body fat but the main thing is is that I really want women to consider, at least consider and try strength training. Yes, me too. I'm a new subscriber of 44. Hi, Melissa, I hear you. I'm 65 and it's a real struggle. So yes, I've got a couple of women on my program that are over 60. And I think that as we get older, and I know since I've hit my 50s, and then it's more so in your 60s because you've gone through the menopause it's going to be a real struggle isn't it Ret you know either retaining the weight that you've got or trying to get in some sort of shape but it is absolutely possible if you go down particularly if you go down the route of strength training john h hi new here oh hi john nice to meet you um I don't know how to pronounce your name, Beigwer, something like that it is, Beigwer, I don't know how to pronounce that. Yes, the evening meal is where I fall off, especially when getting my children's meal together. Oh, that is so hard, isn't it? When you've got to feed your kids, I mean, I feed my kids, they're teenagers now, but do you find that you hoover up the food after them? 
that's what I used to do, graze on anything that was left on their plate, I would eat it. So I'd say the end, the, the thing to do with that, I got this tip from somebody I know who's also a bikini competitor, is stick some chewing gum in your mouth when you're feeding your kids and clearing up after them. That's a good tip to stop that sort of grazing because it is, you know, it's quite annoying and everything can go off plan when you're trying to sort your kids out. That's where my issue is to dinner time for my family. Absolutely. And I hear you, you know, I cook for my kids every day and I'm really passionate to give them a home cooked healthy meal most of the time they do have a takeout once a week and that's all because it just gives me a bit of a break but other than that they have healthy hope you know home cooked meals and so it means that there is temptation for me but I sometimes and I know somebody wanted me to make a video on this I'm going to try and do that is you can sort of adapt some of the foods that you might give your children to sort of diet food so that's another thing that you can look at so you just kind of buy some of the food it's like using spray oils rather than olive oil or something like that although olive oil is fine in itself but to keep the fat content down and sort of five percent fat um ground beef that kind of thing and then making sort of a bolognese sauce for example out of that or tacos which would be really low in fat and you can still do that and then swap your taco shell for some lettuce or something like that so there is there are a few things that I do where it means I don't have to cook twice and then the other strategy that I talked about was actually making my evening meal ahead. So then I don't have to worry about what I'm eating. It's just a quick bung it in the oven or heat it up. And that's going to mean that you're much more likely to succeed. And my kids are used to it because I spent a long time last year being on a diet and getting ready for competition and also the earlier this year they're really used to me eating separate food and I just try and sit down with them that's really important sit down with them maybe not every day but at least some days sit down with them to eat even if you're not eating the same food so Lin K. Lynette, is it possible to lose weight when you are going through the menopause and you have hypothyroidism? Yes, absolutely, it is possible to lose weight while you're going through the menopause. I did it. I'm going through. Well, I'm I'm in perimenopause, so I'm still getting periods. But I I did lose weight, and the clients that I work with, some of them are going through perimenopause and menopause. With hypothyroidism, you can, but I think it's really important to get treatment by your doctor as well, so that we're, we're you're working together with your doctor to kind of identify if there's any medication or treatment that you need for your hypothyroidism, which is going to benefit you in that you're gonna find you're not gonna struggle so much to lose weight but absolutely yes you can and I actually know somebody that I met through TikTok who is a bikini competitor and she had hypothyroidism and and she's like an IFBB pro which is like a really high level bikini competitor so it is possible you probably find that you struggle more than other women and you do have to be in sort of incredibly strict with your diet. But then, you know, I've had to be incredibly strict with my diet as well. You know, what, what I'm talking about, weighing all the food out, doing all that kind of thing. And it seems a bore, but the way that the scales are, are sort of set up now is that, we you know how you weigh your food out has actually become much easier I know back in the day when we had these scales in the UK I don't know whether you had them in the USA where they're like metal discs and you plonk them on a 
on a thing you know that was when I was a child and then it's gradually gone digital and you can actually use any container put it on the scale and I would say that if you're in the USA do weigh your food out in calculator in grams it's much more accurate and you know you can use any container that you're using and then just keep pressing zero so it's so much easier than it used to be Oh, Alex, you follow both of us, and, talk, and I'm talking about Claire, IFBB Pro. I mean, she's amazing. She's absolutely amazing. She's a brilliant competitor, and she's a really, you know, helpful influencer on women. So the other things to note around preparing meals is don't forget to prepare your snacks ahead. And I often get those packaged up into boxes as well, or portions. And I've got in in the um, description of this, you know, live, there is a description underneath. I've actually linked the video where I prepare, as I said, meals. And I prepare a snack ahead, which is my protein and oat bars, which I know everyone always asks me about how they're made. So that's on that video. They're, they're really easy to make. They don't take long and you can do them at the same time as you're doing all your other meal prep. And I've put here, don't forget to do your evening meal. Try and prepare that ahead. And label the boxes. I mean, there was a time where I had to label all my boxes because I didn't know. I marked them because... I was eating kind of six meals a day and I really didn't know what was in the boxes. So I had to label whether they were lunch, dinner, or I, I think I put meal one, meal two, meal three, meal four, meal five, meal six, like that. Because otherwise, I, you know, I didn't know what was going on and my memory is not what it used to be. So it was really important. So that's something you might want to think about is you actually label it, particularly if you've got other people in your household and you don't want them eating your food, you might want to sort of think about labelling it as well so that they don't end up, because that would be really annoying if somebody's eating your food that you've prepared up ahead. So that's a bit about, that was a bit about the, the sort of meal preparation. So I'm going to talk about the snacks now. And... Firstly, I'm going to talk about high protein snacks because what we need to be doing as women over 40 and to complement the strength training that I'm always sort of banging on about and I've just been talking about on this video, it's really good to have a high protein diet. Why? Protein's really good for metabolism and we've lost our metabolism Protein supports muscle growth and we've lost our muscle and protein also keeps you satiated. So it's kind of like a fat burner in three different ways. And so there's stuff like yogurt is really good. And I know that if you're plant based or vegan, you can get the sort of plant based yogurts, although they tend to be lower in protein. So you do have to watch for that. You might have to kind of up your yogurt intake if you or add something else in that's higher in protein to your yogurt because it isn't as high as protein as dairy yogurt. And then my famous protein and oat bars, I've just made some today. And as I said, the video in the link in the description describes how to make them, but it's literally just either plant or whey protein mixed with oats and water or some sort of plant milk and you get that into sort of like a it's like a flapjack consistency really just a very sticky consistency not too runny like a cake consistency and then you just put it in the oven so you weigh out however much you want in, in each portion and sort of multiply it. So say you make five oat bars, protein and oat bars, and you want 30 grams of oats in that and one scoop of protein. So you put 120 grams of oats and four scoops of protein 
and then that's it and just mix some water or plant milk in and put it in the oven they're so easy and the ones that you buy are very very expensive and they're probably full of nasties to be honest with you so that's um not so great another favorite of mine but i know that not everybody likes rice cakes but they're really low in calories as well rice cakes is rice cakes and nut butter rice has a little bit of protein in it and then obviously the nut butter has protein so they're quite good for sort of a pre-workout snack as are the protein and oat bars pre-workout snacks nuts are great because they're really good for hormone health as are nut butters so they're a really good snack so you know things like almonds i know a lot of people have sort of peanut allergy but sort of pecans walnuts but just go careful on those because they are high in fat so they can really push your calories up without realizing it if you're not careful and you can sort of mix them with fruit low low calorie kind of low carb fruits are things like sort of berries but you know I eat bananas apples any kind of fruit that you like pineapple you can add any of those fruits into those snacks and then th these are what I call my hunger snacks <laughs> when I'm really hungry which isn't very often at the moment because I'm I'm not e e really on a diet but when I'm on a diet these are the things that I turn to that are really helpful just because you want something to eat. So zero sugar jello, as you call it in the USA, we call it jelly, which is very confusing because jelly is jam to people in the USA. We call jelly jam. So it's all very confusing. But I know jello is, um, yeah, that's what you call the stuff that wobbles around <laughs> in pots in the USA. So that's really good because they tend to be one small pot of those is eight calories. So you're not going to break your diet. And if you're like me and you've got a bit of a sweet tooth and you think, oh, I'd like a dessert after my main meal, they're my sort of go to. And then cucumbers are really good because they won't add any calories. And in fact, a lot of low carb vegetables so things like green beans, you know, you might not want to have them as a snack so much, but sort of green beans or broccoli, you know, peppers, all those sort of things. And I've got down here cherry tomatoes. They're not particularly high in calories. They're low carb. They're not going to make you fat eating stuff like that. So if you do want a snack, they're a really good go to. And with cucumber, what I like to do is add chili flakes that's really nice or some sort of sweetener on top so it feels like a sweet snack as well and then the next one my um coach who i'm not currently with at the moment recommended these to me and they are fantastic for adding to meals konjac noodles or shirataki noodles they're sometimes called they're only about 10 calories for a packet or a portion of 200 grams so again they're just not going to break your diet and they really fill you up they give you that sensation of feeling really full so they can be a snack or if you want to just add to your meal some extra to make it more filling without adding more calories they're great for that so I use those for, for meals really but you could just you know cook them up add some soy sauce some ginger something like that and you've got like a snack that's really low in calories and I would exercise the last thing on the list I would exercise a bit of caution with diet sodas that you know just no more than one a day because they're not particularly healthy but they are helpful in just giving you that feeling that full feeling of feeling satiated so yes, yeah, so those are the snacks. And before I, I'm gonna just stop and pause for questions because the next thing I'm gonna talk about is supplements. And I think I missed a couple of questions here. 
Is it possible to lose weight when you're going through menopause? Oh, I've done that one. That's Kay Lynette. Um, Nappy Gistry, 69. I have lost weight with strength training. My stomach is not budging, though. It will eventually. You've just got to trust the process. Unfortunately, with belly fat, sometimes it's the last place to go. So I would keep doing what you're doing. Really focus on diet because that's the thing that's going to make the impact with belly fat is, is diet as well as strength training. And putting those two things together, eventually it will go. I mean, I always find in the, my, my tummy, my belly fat, it's harder to shift and also my lower body, so around my upper thighs and glutes. For me, that's the last place to go. And so it can be frustrating, but it will go eventually and you've just got to kind of trust the process. Keep doing what you're doing because that's absolutely fantastic, you know, that you are doing strength training and presumably you are noticing a difference and eventually it will go from the stomach, particularly if you really focus on diet, which is kind of a high protein diet that I've been talking about. So getting protein in with every meal is really, really key. So I'm going to talk about vitamins and supplements now because it was asked, someone asked for this to be covered on the live. Not quite sure if they're here actually, but... I know this is something I generally get asked questions about. And the first thing to say is you actually do not need any vitamins or supplements to lose weight or build muscle. You don't need any supplements. You can do it with exercise and diet. And actually, what I would say is don't do supplements if you haven't addressed exercise and diet. Those are more important. But if you are addressing exercise and diet, then these are the, some of the things that I take and I would recommend to you. So the first thing is, is a multivitamin. Vitamin D is really important during menopause. And now that we're sort of going into autumn and winter in the UK, it's going to be really hard to get vitamin D from sun. So also for black women, it's even more important, the vitamin D, but it's important for all menopausal women. And then it's just getting in your C's, your vitamin C's and your B's. So just look for a multivitamin. The other thing is probiotics can be useful because what can happen is we can have poor gut health. I often suffer from poor, poor gut health and I think it's quite common in women over 40. I know I get a lot of women contacting me that have IBS irritable bowel syndrome and other you know leaky gut and everything else so it's a good idea and the other thing is fermented foods so things like kefir um, sauerkraut there's loads of other kind of fermented foods that you can take all those pro probiotic yogurt drinks you can take them in a tablet so they're a good supplement if that's something that's an issue for you because having poor gut health can prevent us from losing weight. And then the other supplement, I mean, maybe this should be in the top of the list, is protein or some people use casein. Now, the difference between casein and protein is casein is a bit slower release so it just absorbs into your body a bit slower than protein will go. It's quite fast acting. So protein is something that we would probably take post or pre-workout. So it could be whey protein, it could be a plant protein, any kind of protein. And I know people ask me about brands. And I, I think to a certain extent it's personal preference personal preference if you want plant I tend to go for plant because it has less impact on the environment but you know whey's 
fine. Some people will say that whey is better. I don't believe it is. I think it's protein is protein. So it's personal preference on the one that you like the taste of, that sits well on your stomach, going back to gut health. Some of them can cause problems for people. So I think it is a little bit about trial and error. And, um, you know, at some point, I'm going to probably try and review some of the protein powders and, and what I think of them. And then casein might be something that you take later at night that's going to kind of take you through the night. So... I don't know, that's for people, if you get really hungry, for example, at night and you're, you're struggling, which I know I do at times if I'm dieting, casein, it just takes your, your body longer to digest it. So it can sort of keep you satiated for longer and then it's doing that overnight thing of helping restore your muscles as well overnight if you're kind of a bit more serious about strength training and bodybuilding and then the other thing that's really I find useful is BCCAs branch chain amino acids I think I've done that wrong actually it should say BCAAs sorry it should say BCAAs so that's a bit of a typo on my part so branch chain amino acids are just really good for restoring our muscles when we've been working out and I honestly believe that for me it stops me getting muscle soreness because I notice it when I'm not doing my BCAAs so they're really good and normally just drink them while you're working out while you're strength training and then the final one which is I guess it's like the icing on the cake really not necessary absolutely essential some women are really afraid of it it's creatine which is a muscle building supplement i would highly recommend it if you're getting all your diet and everything on in place because we c and it's the studies have proven that it actually works for muscle building and i just take it as a drink with my bcaa's I just mix it up and do it during my workout and it can help with performance d during your workout as well. But I really believe that as women over 40, it's a bit of a struggle to build muscle. So creatine can be really helpful and there's loads of evidence to show when you look at all the studies that it does actually help. Sports people use it. Um, it you know it's been around for years in in the bodybuilding community so it and it's completely safe I believe it's completely safe it does have that reputation for causing water retention I'm not sure that it does I suffer from water retention really badly and I kind of take it I don't think it really makes that much difference, but sometimes if I'm having a really bad episode of water retention, I'll kind of cut it out, but I'm not sure that it does really cause water retention. So those are my kind of go-to supplements. And I'm going to talk about the next one because I get asked about it a lot and it's pretty controversial and I want to cover it today and I want to be honest with you about fat burners so fat burners are another thing that they're not absolutely necessary do i take them yes i do as particularly as you can see there that's a, a, a picture an image from one of my shows um where you can see i've got really lean there i'm probably down to like something like 15% body fat or something like that I got extremely lean and it's really really tough and so what I think the fat burners can be helpful for is when you're really really hungry and it just helps with stopping that hunger and feeling satiated I think so that's what it's really helpful for. I'm not convinced. Oh, and I do 
when I'm going through a real leaning out phase, I take them prior to working out, sometimes before my um, cardio workout to give me an extra energy boost. But I would say exercise... <laughs> I would say exercise caution with fat burners. They do have a lot of caffeine in them normally. The ones that I use, I, I don't know whether they're available particularly in the USA. And I'm just trying to think of the ones. that might, They've gone out of my head now, the ones that I use, but it will come back to me as I'm talking. But yeah, so I would exercise caution with them don't use them all the time but if it's to get you over that kind of feeling where you're feeling although you shouldn't be really hungry because presumably you're not going to get as lean as that but if you're going through a phase where you're maybe wanting to get beach ready and you're just giving that extra push in terms of a bit more cardio and a bit less food they can be helpful with just helping us control appetite. I'm not actually sure that they burn more fat. Um, I've just thought of the brand that I use, which is called Grenade. That's the brand I use, but it's I know it's a British brand, so I'm not quite sure whether they are, it's readily available. They do loads of supplements though. They do things like sort of protein powders and protein bars and that kind of thing and so that was the supplement that was recommended to me by a coach of mine and it's not an illegal supplement it's totally you know you can just buy it on Amazon it's available everywhere but I think as I said and I'm happy to kind of take questions and I wanted to be really honest with you about that because I know it's talked about a lot but I think they can be a useful tool and I know other YouTubers like Paul Rebella um, he talks about it Rebellia um, he, he talks about using fat burners as well and I'm sure he probably does with his clients because he coaches bikini competitors but he, you know it's not something you would do unless you're I think it's when you're struggling a bit for energy and you're struggling with controlling your appetite and you're having to sort of cut calories, you know, and then it can be a really, really useful tool. So are there fat burners without caffeine? Yes. I don't know what brands they are, Kaylinette, but there are some fat burners without caffeine so you probably if you did a search up on amazon you'd be able to find them so i take a fat burner by code age from the us i sometimes take it on fasted workouts so yes that was what i was doing in terms of working out fasted cardio where you're, you're a little bit you get up in the morning you're a bit lacking in energy and it's just going to sort of take you through it. But it's one of those things, as I said, they're not absolutely essential, but they can just help you out when you're you're feeling a bit lacking in energy and you need to get through some of these workouts. And that's when I would take them as, as kind of prior to a workout. And I think they have got, they generally have things like caffeine someone said green tea that's absolutely right and they have they put stuff in them that just stops takes the edge off the hunger i would say so that's the main thing they can be really useful so that's fat burners and then i was just going to talk a little bit about my programs which i did do last time i'm going to just run through really quickly my two main programs. I also have a coaching program, but that's not open at the moment. It's actually full. And I am going to be launching that again. It's a one-to-one -one coaching program, which is quite different. I'm going to be launching that again in December for women to start in January. So it'd be worth, if you don't, sign up to my email list. Just sign up to my email list so that you can get that... Um, get you know get notified when that launches 
So the other two options, and these are kind of what I would call off-the-shelf programs, so they're not one-to-one -one coaching, is this first one is the 12-week Lean and Strong program, and that's really aimed at women that have got a bit of experience of strength training, and you want to take it to the next level. It's 12 weeks. It includes your sort of paper, if you like, PDF plans, but also video tutorials on all the workouts. So there are strength training workouts that change every four weeks. And then you've got sort of HIIT workouts, guided HIIT workouts as well included in that. And then there's a meal plan that starts off. The, the focus and the emphasis is very much about building strength. That's what's called lean and strong in order to lose fat. That's really that. So the first four weeks of the programme, you are on sort of fairly reasonably high calories. So it's kind of like 1800 calories. And then through the programme, it starts to sort of taper down. So towards the end, you have the, the, the choice, really, because you can stay up on the high calories and or you have the choice to start taking them quite a lot lower so that you're going to see that more significant amount of fat drop but I know that people that have started the program even on those really high calories at the start of the program are seeing weight loss and in fact one woman that joined my coaching program from this program she was on a thousand calories a day and went up to those really high calories and and she was fine you know she didn't gain weight or anything because the thing is, the strength training protocol on this one, it is quite demanding. So you're going to need the food to fuel your body to be able to perform the workouts. And so, so that's that one. And then the other one, which I think I would call this my entry point program. It's more geared for people that might not have done strength training before, but it doesn't matter if you haven't done strength training before if you sorry if you have done strength training before it doesn't matter you know I've had women that have been quite experienced go on this program but it's also suitable for beginners and it's an entry point program where you're going to see with this program um, a more significant amount of fat loss in a shorter period of time so I think I created it for women to understand what's doable by doing the three things that I recommend, which are strength training and, you know, HIIT workouts, 21 minute HIIT workouts. And then there's a little bit of cardio, more cardio incorporated in to give you that bit more fat loss. And then focusing on a really good high protein diet that's set out for you in both programs the diet is absolutely set out for you but you do have you know food swaps as well and what I just wanted to say the reason I'm giving you that information is because from today I'm doing a 20% discount a Black Friday event that's going to run through to the 27th of November and it's quite funny, actually, because in the UK, we never had Black Friday. Five years ago, we didn't have Black Friday. And now we have, because really it's a USA thing that's um, based around the day after Thanksgiving, I believe. And we don't celebrate Thanksgiving. But now Black Friday is absolutely massive in the UK and everyone's doing it. And if our shops were open, they would be... You know, if our malls and shopping centres were open, they would be full, but they're not because we're in lockdown at the moment. So none of the retail outlets are open apart from um, DIY stores. So I just thought I was going to give you guys that opportunity to have a discount, which means that if you're kind of thinking, oh, shall I try one of those out? You know, particularly if you were thinking, oh, should I try the six week shred? You're getting really good a really good discount on those you know products at the moment so it's a good opportunity for, for you to try them out without you know too much risk and I give a 30 money back 30 day money back guarantee anyway 
no quibble if you just email me and say this isn't for me Melissa I'll refund the money if it's within that 30 days that's how confident I am about my programs and you know the success that you can find with them if you follow them so that was my bit for today so I'm happy now to kind of hand over to questions I'll just trail through the questions that I haven't answered already for the 12 week program did you say there is a home strength drink sorry I didn't say whether it was so the six week shred program is just home workouts only but with the 12 week program you can either do there are kind of two they're two separate programs if you like within the 12 week program so one of them is the strength training program from home and you are going to need a heavier set of dumbbells for that. So something in the region of £20 dumbbells you're going to need for that 12-week programme if you're doing it at home. And, and there is the option for doing it at the gym as well. And that's a completely different workout with different video tutorials you know, so there are different video tutorials on the gym workouts than they are the home workouts. That was quite important to me to make it different so that you're getting the most out of your home workouts because you have to approach home workouts in a slightly different way because you don't have all that equipment available to you. So what I advise people to buy is, as I said, a bit sort of a heavier set of dumbbells for that one so something around the region of 20 pounds could be a bit less could be a bit more and something around the region of six to ten pound dumbbells a lighter set and then you know if you're feeling really adventurous and I would advise you do this and I talk about this on the program but a pull-up bar but it does depend to a certain extent with the pull-up bar what your weight is at the moment for some of the really heavier women it might be too much but if you use a pull-up bar you can actually and I show you how to do this within the program you can use a band to support you so it's not actually doing full pull-ups they're they're sort of like the assisted pull-ups in the gym where your weights your body weight is partly supported can we start this program whenever we like if we purchase it today? Yes, absolutely. So it's sort of very much guided. There are just you once you purchase the program, you get access to the whole area which gives you all the content, all the videos, the guides, the meal plans and everything. And then if you have any other questions about it, you there's a there's a message system within the program where you can just message me or you can email me and you just do it within your so if you you wanted to get it in black friday but you don't want to start it for a few weeks that's okay you just start it and finish it when you want so that this is a really good question about cellulite so Nappy Gistry has asked which program is better for toning up. They're both really toning up. I would go for for me toning up is is about building muscle. That's what I think we kind of because back in the day when it was um Jane Fonda we talked about toning up. But what I have actually watched a few Jane Fonda videos and believe it or not she did actually use weights in some of her videos albeit they were like dumbbells because you know even then they were talking you know talking about using weights to tone up but what toning up means is and if you see any of my pictures that's probably what you mean I look toned is it's really building muscle and so I would say the lean and strong program is the most effective way of doing that because it's really kind of really focusing on tackling that and that's what's going to sort of tackle cellulite and body fat eventually in the long term 
and I would say it's probably better value for money. You're getting more for your money by going for that one. If it was me, I would definitely go for the Lean and Strong programme if I was in your position. But you do have to have had some experience of strength training before. Because just as an example, when you access the programme, you'll see that so on your leg training days, and this is actually the same for the gym and the home workouts, you have 10 sets of 10 squats on one of your leg sessions. Now that's a lot of sets. So if you've never done strength training before, that's actually quite tough going. So it's just to be mindful of that, that they, it is really geared up for somebody that's done probably at least six weeks of strength training before. So somebody that's done the six weeks shred and then they, move, they can move on to doing the lean and strong program quite easily because they will be used to working out quite hard on strength training, although they are losing, they are using lighter weights. Hey Lynette, I have a set of £10 dumbbells which is really heavy for me. Would that work? And then I would move up to 15 to 20. Yeah, that would work. I would say really try to move up and you'll see this is explained in the programme because I think you're right. It's about where you are at the moment and everyone's different. Everyone has, they start from a different level and it's really important not to compare yourself to others. Luckily, as women, we don't want to go and show off to our friends or, or peers in the gym about how heavy we can lift. We're not, we, we're not sort of made up like that, are we? So we're really lucky. We don't care. There's no... We're happy to go at our own pace, I think, as women. So I think it's really important to, to go within your own limitations, but then... Within the programme, I will be pushing you to keep challenging yourself because that's what's going to get results. Is keep either increasing the weight or the difficulty in some way. So that's decreasing the, the time between sets and reps, slowing the movement down. You're always constantly needing to increase the difficulty in some way when you're talking about strength training because if we keep doing the same thing over and over again, we won't get results because our muscles just get used to what we're giving them. So it's really important to keep challenging. And that's why the programme does progress and keep, you know, upping the ante through the programme. That's what happens. You know, the level, level of difficulty kind of increases and the workouts progressively get more challenging as it goes through because that's really important. Hi, Lisa. So, yes, with any more questions, I'm happy to take any more questions on any topic that you... I know there were some topics that people had asked for that I wasn't necessarily going to cover today in my presentation. So if there's anything that I haven't covered on any particular topic, I'm really happy to answer that, because I know it's... It's always a good opportunity, isn't it, when you see me and I, I don't always cover everything in my videos. I try to sort of cover what I think people are looking for and I always keep an eye on the comments section on the videos so that I understand what exactly you're looking for. Sorry, I'm just taking a little bit of a sip of water. So it does look, I don't think I can see any more questions. I think I've answered everything. Yeah, so Kay Lynette, you say you don't eat sugar. Do you mean processed sugar? I mainly mean processed sugar, but I think things like maple syrup can be still a bit of, a bit problematic because honey or maple syrup anything like that it's still it's got sugars they've got sugars in them and I try to avoid those sorts of sugars I don't think they're helpful I think we can tend to as we get older suffer from sugar cravings a lot more 
And I think one of the ways of dealing with that is to just kind of avoid having too much stuff with any kind of sugar in it. And I think fruit is okay. Fruit's fine. Um, things like stevia as an alternative rather than stuff like maple syrup or honey I prefer if I'm quite honest with you so hopefully that answers your question and sugar just means we're taking in a lot of extra empty what I call empty calories so they're not going to give us any kind of nutritional benefit eating stuff you could argue honey gives you some kind of nutritional benefit because it kind of has some antibacterial properties, doesn't it? But I prefer to sort of stick to whole foods, healthy whole foods. They're going to fill you up and it's good to just try and cut out sugar as much as you can. Ask questions. I'm new to your channel. Love how you explain everything so well. Thank you. Thank you, that's a really kind thing to say. Lisa Love, if I lose weight, my face gets skinny, like 5k or so. Me too. Well, that's the trade-off, isn't it? That is so true. So when you lose weight, what happens is you can, and this is particularly relevant for older women, is it can make you actually look worse in the face. So I know when I get really lean, in facially, I don't look particularly good. So it's a bit of a trade-off, isn't it? Do you want the really lean, nice body? Or is it, you know, do you want that sort of face that you have when you carry a little bit more weight? And unfortunately, you can't have both unless you have fillers, potentially, which I know some women my age do who are, who get pretty lean. They, they do have fillers, so that's the only other option, I think. Kaylina, if I lose the weight, will my breasts get smaller? Generally, they do, yes. Yes, that's it. Because really what we have with breast tissue is a certain amount of breast tissue is body fat. So that's why you get many women that lose weight or get really lean want to have breast augmentation don't they because it, it that's one of the places that it goes so generally I can't promise it will happen for you but for most women it does they didn't get large until I started going through menopause oh yeah that can happen yeah can you tell me something about cellulite I don't know what you want to know about cellulite I think I believe, I don't believe in creams and all that sort of thing. I just think it's about diet and exercise, getting rid of cellulite. And I have cellulite, you know, which I tend to carry around my upper thighs and around my glutes, you know, that dimply sort of stuff. And when it goes, is it's just about exercise and diet, and and get when you start to get rid of the body fat, the the cellulite will go, and particularly when you're strength training, it's really good for that. Oh, Nappy Guistri saying her her breast tissue went. So yeah, that's for some people that would be a plus point. I kind of quite like the fact that I lose weight off my bust when I lose weight but not everyone is like that some people that for them that's not good but you know for me I just find it, it it's it, it's good you know because having larger breasts can start to sort of make you have shoulder problems back problems I find it's a bit inhibiting for exercise and all sorts of things really but everyone's different aren't they how many days a week should you do HIT? So I like to do three times a week. Um, or you could, it, it's like an hour a week, split into three, 20 minutes. Or sometimes I do an hour a week just in one session. I do think it's better to split it out. In the Lean and Strong program, I have one session of sort of military style fitness 
in there, which I think it's like 40 minutes, and then three times a week, 15 minutes, hit on some kind of piece of equipment. So that's how it works. So it's kind of between an hour and an hour and a half a week. But, you know, if you're not used to doing anything at all and you do 15 minutes three times a week, that's going to be a lot for somebody who's never done... You know, if you're pretty inactive at the moment, that's quite a lot because high-intensity interval training, just for people that don't know HIT, I'm talking in jargon, so I'll try and explain it, is intense activity for 30 seconds to a minute normally, very intense activity for 30 seconds to a minute, and then 30 seconds to a minute rest. So it's really demanding so for some people if you haven't done any activity before and you do 15 minutes of that you know about it so how often do you cut do, do you do cardio depends on your goal how often you should do cardio I sort of say three times a week is good and as I've said before I like it to be high intensity interval training I recognise that some people can't always do high intensity interval training at the moment. I've got a hip problem myself, hip problem with my hip, which is, you know, if I sort of started doing, because I don't have a lot of opportunity for different types of cardio because our gyms are shut. So for me, it'd be something like jump rope. Well, that's just going to be out of the question at the moment, jump rope or any kind of military fitness like burpees so I'm doing some walking walking with a weighted vest until I get better so that's always a good one if if it's out of the question for you walking's absolutely fantastic really good for burning fat walking is underrated including by me I underrated it if you're consistent with it and you do it say you do it you do need to do walking more often than hit though if you do it something like five times a week for 30 to 40 minutes you're going to burn some fat you're going to burn some fat because you're consistent and especially if you're consistent with it because I think weight loss is a lot about consistency and being able to stick to something over a long period of time and with walking it's quite easy to stick to that isn't it because it doesn't feel like you're not thinking oh I've got to go on the elliptical in the gym and sweat it out you've just got to go for a walk you know round the block or I'm lucky enough I go straight into sort of countryside where I live into a a nature reserve so it's really easy to try and fit that into your routine people say brown rice is better for you I don't like brown rice so is white rice beneficial yeah I don't like brown rice I was brought up by a mum who went into health food stores and everything was brown. Brown bread, brown rice and brown pasta even. Brown pasta is absolutely awful. And no, I don't eat any of those. I do eat brown bread. I quite like brown bread. But brown rice I'm not a fan of and I have white rice. White rice is absolutely fine. The reason people say brown, sort of things like brown rice, oats brown bread brown pasta is because they are they've got a sort of lower glycemic glycemic index so they're sort of slower release so they're going to keep you fuller for longer that's the reason it's better because it it's taking longer to get through your system so white rice will cause So for some people, if they've got type 2 diabetes, they might have been given that guidance not to have white rice because it will give you an insulin spike. But it's not if you unless you have type 2 diabetes, you don't really need to worry about that. So I have white rice it's absolutely fine. And I think to a certain extent with dieting, there's no point in eating food you don't like, is there? You've got to try and find that balance where you can lose weight, but you're still eating foods you enjoy. Because if you're constantly just eating stuff and you look at the plate and you just kind of think, oh, I don't really want this, you're not going to last, are you? It's not going to work. 
so you have to kind of find what works for you. I believe my love of olive oil caused my cellulite. I have tried to eliminate it. Well, I think any fat can, to a certain extent, cause... Or actually, I'll change that. Any food. If we're overeating food, it can cause us to gain weight in, you know, and body fat, including cellulite. So, you know, a lot of sugary processed foods can cause problems as well. Olive oil in terms of health is actually really good, but we just have to limit it like any other fat, like nuts and avocados. They're great. Olive oil, nuts and avocados, particularly for menopausal women, it's really important that we have those kind of fats in our diet, but we've just got to, we've got to watch it. That's where you have to weigh and measure them quite carefully so you're not overeating. Mrs. R.M., good morning, everyone, from Chicago, Illinois. Good morning, Mrs. R.M., it's lovely to have you. We're in, we're in the evening here, actually. It's actually dark here now in the UK. Nappy Goistry, Melissa, do you have trouble working out during your cycle? If so, what do you do those days? I still work out during my cycle, but I do recognise that I might have less energy during my menstrual cycle. And funnily enough, there's evidence that actually, for instance, with strength training, you can't lift as heavy. You'll probably find if you're doing any kind of cardio workout that it probably you can't do it as well. But I still complete all my workouts. I never use it as an excuse to cry off. Even if I can't do as well that day, I will still do it and get through it. I think it's really important that if you're... Because that's about consistency and consistency and being on your menstrual cycle it's not an illness we can still do it our body can do a lot if we ask it it's about mental toughness so i i just still do it even if you know you and i have those days where i don't feel like working out and i'm not feeling it and i'll still go and do it because those are the days i feel it's really important to do it to keep consistency going and not make excuses and more often than not you will feel better for it anyway coffee with sugar lisa love coffee with sugar coffee's okay i would avoid sugar if that's what you're asking me i think that's what you're asking me maybe go for some sort of other sweetener instead sorry i'm just going to turn to my daughter that's coming yeah my daughter's just walked in. Um, what do you usually drink for pre-workout? This is Kay Lynette. So, yes, I didn't talk about that in my supplements. Eat or drink, sorry. What do I usually eat or drink? This is quite important, and I think I didn't cover it in supplements because it's more about food. I tend to have, and you'll find this, Kay Lynette, if you buy one of my programmes, you'll see it on there. But I tend to have some sort of pre-workout snack. So it'll be oats and protein powder, like one of my bars that I talked about. Or I might have a bagel spread with sort of nut butter or peanut powder mixed with water. It's called PB, available on Amazon. So I have something with a bit of carbohydrate and a bit of protein. It could be chicken and rice. Because it just depends on what day, what time of day you're working out as to what the appropriate snack is. And then um, why that's really important is it's going to give us the energy for working out, particularly strength training. It's okay to do your cardio fasted, but for strength training we should really have some food in our system to get the full benefit because it will give us more energy to train, which will mean that we will build muscle more effectively. It was one of the mistakes I was making back in the day when I was um, intermittent fasting. I used to go to the gym really early in the morning on an empty stomach, strength train, and then not eat for five hours. And I wasn't really seeing any results because of that. 
So it's really important to focus your meals around your workouts, your strength training workouts. I, Kaylina, I think someone told me that creatine was vegan by default. Does it have different flavours? Well, I just buy one that's completely pure. So yes, I think it is vegan by default. And mine is not flavoured or coloured in any way. Because what I do is I mix it in with other... You know, I mix it in with my BCAAs, which that's flavoured. So I don't need to have flavour in my creatine. But you could just mix it with water and it's kind of fine. It's just a, it's a white powder... So it doesn't really taste of anything. Tracy Ann, hi. Melissa, are your recipes on my website? I would say not, probably not, but they are, I have linked some. So I think you've probably joined a bit later. So when I was going through my presentation, I explained that um, I've actually linked one of my videos on meal prep so that's where you can find my recipes and also if you look at what I eat in a day I've got a few of those with lots of my recipes on but there's one that's linked underneath this video which you you'll have an opportunity to watch back if you haven't done already if you didn't see the whole thing sorry you can watch it back so that's a good thing that you can do if you get a chance so sorry, I'm just trying to close my presentation down and look at questions. So please, by all means, let me know if you've got any questions because I'm, you know, I'm happy to stay on. Do BCAAs have sucralose? Is that good or bad for you? I believe most of them have artificial sweeteners. I'm not averse to artificial sweeteners. I think they have their place. But I think that you just have to be careful and not have too many of them. So that's why I was saying earlier on about the diet sodas. You know, if you're having five diet sodas dr drinks a day, that's probably not a good idea. But, you know, that... It's everything in moderation, isn't it? It's just using that rule, really, that it's everything in moderation. I think we've probably come to an end there. Lots of questions. So that's absolutely fantastic. And I always love doing these live streams. I absolutely love it. And I will do another one soon. Oh, I've just had one more question. Which BCAAs do you take? I use Grenade again, which I'm afraid is a UK brand. But I don't think it really matters. So I'll just put it in the comments section. Anyone that's available on Amazon that you can see is, you know had some good reviews I would go for that and sometimes as I said with the protein powder it's a bit trial and error just try it out and it might be that it agrees with you I think BCAAs are less risk I, I think that with protein powders you can sometimes find that they cause digestion issues and they're a bit you've got to try different ones before you hit on the one that works for you Nappy Gistry, final question. I have issues with my knees. Do you have modifications? Absolutely, yes. I've been creating modifications as I've gone along, actually, because what's happened is women have joined who have had problems with their knees, and then I've created new workouts and routines for them. So there's a HIIT workout, and then there's... Um, some strength training modifications for women with bad knees as well because you're going to find it's difficult to do things some people find it's difficult to squat everybody's got different issues with their knees lunges can be particularly difficult so i've put i've uploaded a video with some options on that 
So hopefully that answers your question. But I do think it's a really common problem in our age group. And, you know, it's good that you've asked me about the workaround because for some people, there's certain things. So jumping, for example, can be really difficult. So I've got a low impact hit workout there. So I think we've sort of come to an end and it, yeah, as I said, it's really lovely to speak to you guys again. I love doing these lives. I'm going to do more of them. Always keep your comments go coming. Thank you so much for kind of, you know, following me. For those of you that follow me and subscribe, it means everything to me. I've still got another question. I keep trying to finish off. Is swimming a good exercise? It can be good. I think it's harder to get fat loss with swimming. Maudie Victoria, thank you for asking the question. I would tend to sort of veer away from swimming as something that's going to be an alternative to something like HIT or strength training. My, you know, primarily I'm all about strength training and then hit workouts but if hit workouts are just not on the cards for you in the same way that I talked about walking do swimming instead if that works for you but I don't think you're going to get a massive fat loss with swimming unless you're combining that with something like strength training So I really am going to ha have to go there because I can see my daughter is hovering, waiting for something. I think she's very, very hungry. So i got to go and sort something out. So um, it was lovely to talk to you guys because it is actually, it's kind of 5.30 p.m. here in the UK. So we're on, we're on sort of key, kids' tea time here. But it was absolutely amazing to talk to you again. And yeah, just do keep comments coming on all my kind of videos on the type of stuff that you want to see me cover. I'm going to do one on um, some of the more popular diets. That's my, this is a breaking, breaking news. My next video, I'm going to review diets like Zoom and Weight Watchers and stuff because I know I get asked a lot about these diets. So I'm, I'm having a good look at them and doing some background research. And I'm going to give you my verdict on some of those diets and what the best ones are. So until the next one, I'm going to say bye there and just see you again very, very soon. Right, I can end it there.